All right, Foundations 11, here we go, video two. This video is just going to be a general conversation about identifying patterns. When we get to video three, we're going to look at specific types of patterns where we can find a mathematical representation. And oftentimes we can find a mathematical representation, but sometimes patterns are uh, just patterns. And they're not necessarily uh, ones we can attribute to a specific mathematical representation the full way through, nor should we. Sometimes it's just a puzzle of determining what is the pattern here. So let's just look at this first example. I have a sequence of numbers, and the examples I'm going to give you are always going to be sequences of numbers, but in your notes there are a few patterns with respect to changing shapes and um, just different visual patterns. So this is more of a intuitive look rather than a mathematical formulaic look. So here I have a pattern. One, three, five, seven. Well, so what is that pattern? Well, we can just look and say, always look for addition first. How do I get to three? I add two. How do I get to five? I add two. How do I get to seven? I add two. Well, that is my pattern. My pattern is I add two to every number previous. So what's my next two numbers? Well, seven plus two is nine. Nine plus two is 11. So that's pretty basic, pretty simple. There's the trend right there. Sometimes the trend can be hidden. So if we look at this example, now sure, you could plug this into your calculator and do the multiplication, but let's look at the pattern that um, grows here. So here we have a one, right? And then what do we get? We get one, two, one. How many ones do we have in this multiplication? We have two of them, so we plunk a two in the middle. Maybe that's your pattern, but then all of a sudden we have three, so now our middle number is a three. So that there's my pattern. So then when I get four ones, oh, that means it must be one, two, three, four, and then three, two, one. So I'm continuing the pattern from above. And then one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And if you plug those into your calculator, you will indeed get those results. And that's your visual pattern. You can, you can access it visually. A lot of times it's about trial and error. Does your pattern make sense? Particularly when we get to section 1.3, you will see how we can trial and error to find um, the equation of a pattern. So now here's two more examples. Sometimes they're clear, sometimes they're not. So again, maybe start with addition. Well, here I go plus three, and then here I go plus two. Okay, so it's definitely not a constant addition. Maybe try multiplication. Well, here I go times two, and nope, that's not times two either. So now we gotta start looking a little bit closer. And you don't always have to look one number to the next. You could look, okay, well, what about, how do these two numbers relate? Well, that's plus five, that's plus 10. And then that's plus 10, and that's plus 20. There is a pattern there. That's plus 20, so we're moving up by double previous, and then we'd get plus 40. So that's one way to view that pattern, but there's another way as well. So from there, you could say, okay, well, what's 36 plus 40? It's 76, so that would be my next number. And then what's 38 plus 30? Well, that would be, uh, 38 plus 30 is 68. So if we're jumping, we see we go plus five, plus 10, plus 20. Oh, sorry, we're not jumping 30, we're jumping 40, right? Because we doubled the previous. So 38 plus 40 is 78. So those would be my next two numbers if that was the pattern. And it looks like that's my pattern that's continuing. But it's also hidden here in another manner. To get to six, I multiply by two. And then to get to eight, I add two. But now look, from, to get to eight to 16, I multiply by two and I add two. So there's my pattern as well. So multiply by two, add two. So 38 times two is in fact 76, and then add two, and I get to 78. So I identified that pattern represented in two different ways, and both ways make sense. So these are about intuitively finding a pattern when you can. So now let's look at this one. Well, here I am adding two and then adding one, so no thanks. Here I am multiplying by two, and then I'm not multiplying by two. So that's not my pattern. So again, what's my pattern going to be? Well, let's think multiply and add again. If I multiply by two, add one. Multiply by two, add two. Multiply by two, add three. There's my pattern. So I multiply by two, and then I add one more than the previous time. So if I added three here, then I'm going to multiply by two, 54. And then I'm going to add 4, so 50, 
eight. Those are my next two numbers. So there's the pattern hidden in there. And it's about finding it, trialing and erroring and trying again. So here's two more. Uh, again, addition first. Well, that'd be plus 10 and then uh, plus 2. So it's not constant addition. Multiplication times 3 and nope. So constant addition, constant multiplication don't work. Then it's often helpful to look for a multiplication addition combo maybe. So here's times 3 and then plus 2. Well, and that's also now times 3 uh, and plus 2. And there is my pattern times 3 plus two. Now these are just examples I came up with. So obviously I've created this pattern. So they're a little similar in these senses. They're not always going to occur like this. So you just need to be prepared to try. So the next number is 161 times three, which is 483. And then we're going to add two. So those are my next two numbers in that pattern. That's an 85. So let's look at one more here. Well, wait a minute. Now I'm going from positive to a negative. So that's kind of strange. And then I have an, a positive and then a positive and then a negative. So this looks a little funky. Well, let's see what happens. In order to get from two to negative six, there's two options. You could subtract eight, but then to get from negative six to 12, you're adding 18. And then subtracting eight doesn't get you to four. So that's not my pattern. To get from 2 to negative 6, I multiply by negative 3. And then to get from negative 6 to 12, I add 18. Again, how do I get back to 4? So this is a tricky pattern. So let's just look a little bit closer. Maybe we, maybe we don't start with multiplication. Maybe we subtract 8, because that still gets us to negative 6. And then how do you get from negative 6 to positive 12? Well, you multiply by negative 2. Now, to get to 12 to 4, ah, you subtract 8 again. And then to get from 4 to negative 8, you multiply by negative 2. And then you subtract 8 again. And then you multiply by negative 2. There's my pattern. So from 32 now, I subtract 8, which gives me 24. And then from the 24, I multiply by negative 2. And I get the next two numbers, 24 and negative 48. That's a tough one, right? So there you go. It takes a little bit to look. So that's our pattern section. Section 1.3 is going to be inductive and deductive reasoning. So we're going to apply some numerical and then some thought logic to particular situations. So thanks for this one. Don't get frustrated with patterns. They're not always easy to find. It's more of just a trial and error puzzle. And section 1.4 is also puzzles. So this whole section 1 is about thinking persistence, and trying to find a pattern within a scenario. It's one of the hardest things we do, especially now because all of our answers are on Google. So thinking is difficult. See you next time.